what are you guys doing in my camera closet? Oh, I know what. You want to know why I bought the Sony a7 III when I already own the Nikon D850. I'm pretty sure you can tell by now, but let me shed some light on the subject. So about a year ago, I started planning that I'd like to start a YouTube channel, which I did, 1st of January 2019. And I did some tests with Nikon D850, and they turned out absolutely horrible. If you want to find out why, keep on watching. I need this. Also, after watching my last episode, a few of my friends said I was a little bit too serious. Do you think I'm too serious? Juice. Right, let's roll the intro. Okay, so now I've switched over to the Sony a7 III. And I don't know if you guys can see, but that's the Sony focus pulling, and it's perfect. If you'd like any technical information when it comes to the sensor capabilities, you can go over to dxomark.com. I believe the Sony a7 III got a 96 rating, and the Nikon got a 100 rating. Both these cameras capture 4K video at identical frame rates. They both capture slow-mo, 120, 60, at identical frame rates. They both have microphone and headphone options, allowing you to record professional quality audio. So let me tell you what made me go out and buy the Sony a7 III. Both these cameras take great photos. They've both got jaw-dropping, I mean like, <gasps> autofocus when it comes to photography. However, the Sony does win because it has awesome, and I mean awesome, low light capabilities, and it's got the color profiles. Now, if I were to go on a trip, say I'm flying to Los Angeles, I'm flying to London, and I would choose only one camera, it would be the Sony a7 III. The video is absolutely incredible, especially with the autofocus. The face detection is absolutely perfect. It doesn't Oh, it's just painful to think about. It doesn't step focus like the Nikon. It's just smooth, as you can see. I can just go in, I can go out, and it... Just checking. And it really works well. For photography, it's got a site called Eye Autofocus, where it locks in on one of the eyes of your subjects, and it follows them around just by the eye. So it's always in focus. I've found it to work really, really well. I know Canon is regarded better for autofocus capabilities, except for low light where Sony wins. And I really wanted to buy myself a mirrorless camera, however the EOS R just didn't cut it. Comparing them, the Sony has like 693 focus points all around, whereas the Nikon has 153, that's quite a huge difference. Nikon uses off sensor phase detection, whereas Sony uses on sensor phase detection and contrast detection, which makes it the boss. When talking about photography though, the Nikon D850 is absolutely incredible. Its autofocus in photography is always spot on. I have like 99.9% .9 of my photos always in focus. The screen on both cameras is a tilt screen. It doesn't flip out sideways, which would be really helpful for vloggers. Now the Nikon has just over 2 million pixels in its screen, whereas the Sony has about 900,000, so that's quite a difference when it comes to resolution on the screen. However, I don't really notice a difference. What these do is help you take full advantage of the sensor's dynamic range, allowing you to film in a flat profile, which in turn gives you a lot more flexibility in post-production to manipulate things like shadows, highlights, and colors. Nikon has something called a flat profile, and it really isn't flat. It's about as flat as Mammoth Mountain. If you've been to Mammoth Mountain, you know it's not flat. It's nowhere near as flat as Sony's color profiles. Sony has profiles such as S-Log2, which is incredibly popular, though it's got an ISO of 800, and it's incredibly wonderful new color profile called HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, it's got an ISO of 100. I find it to be one of my favorites. I've done a lot of tests with it, 
and it suits my needs the most because there's very little post-production and it looks really good coming out the camera. Sony has something called Gamma Display Assist. I absolutely love this because you can turn on your color profile, say you turn on S-Log2 or you turn on HLG, it will actually emulate what your image will look like using the standard gamma curve of a HD television. It still records your chosen color profile, but with it turned on, it allows you to concentrate much more on what you're filming because you haven't got this flat image, but you've got this punchy image that is more or less what you'd have when you finish post-production. Image stabilization. The Sony has five axis image stabilization and also most of its lenses have image stabilization, which means it's really, really smooth, especially when you're filming. Whereas the Nikon, no image stabilization in body. Wait, the Nikon comes in at just over a kilo. Now the Sony is about 650 gram, so it's nice and light and it's gonna be a lot more forgiving on your back when shooting on a gimbal like the Ronin S for example. B-roll, they both have really awesome 120 frames per second slow motion. Now the Nikon face detection, there's no point even mentioning it because it doesn't work. Whereas the Sony, when it goes to slow-mo, it turns off the face detection, but it still has autofocus, which works really well. Sony does have an S and Q mode. However, if you do use the S and Q mode, your bit rate will drop from 100 megabits all the way down to about 12, 16, which means you lose out on a lot of information that you can keep. I recommend flipping the dial over to one or two, creating your own profile, making sure that you have slow-mo, filming at 100 bit rate, so you retain all that information later on for post-production. The Sony has an electronic viewfinder, and I just, oh my God, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It's absolutely just, it, it, I can't stand it. I cringe every time I have to take a photo, especially if there's like a fast moving object, so say I've got a model, and I've got to follow her around. It, it just doesn't keep up with where I'm going. The Nikon has an optical viewfinder, so it's, it's just beautiful. It's, it's perfect. If I could compare the two, then this would be Luke Skywalker. The Sony would be Darth Vader. Crop mode, so what crop mode essentially does, it gives you a 1.5 times zoom without any real loss in quality. Nikon has it, Sony has it, and it's extremely useful. Now where Sony has the upper hand is that it has something called clear image zoom. It gives you another 1.5 times zoom. So essentially you have three times zoom in the Sony. Now that's a real useful tool to have. The Sony is extremely primitive in design. It's like, um, Stepping on a box of Legos, it's almost painful to hold. It's small, it's, it's, it's like a little metal rectangle box. It's not molded perfectly to your hands like the Nikon. However, it does have like a million buttons on its body that you can program to almost any function you want. And once you memorize those functions, you're about as fast as Superman. Fro gets really, really, really dry talking for so long. <sighs> Juice. Photography. So the Nikon D850 is primarily a studio landscape camera and it's absolutely wonderful when it comes to photography. Just, mm, I love this thing. You could say I should have gone and bought the Sony A7 3 R A A3 set, you know what I mean. But the electronic viewfinder, just, it's just, it's, so that's about it when it comes to why I bought the Sony a7 III when I already own the Nikon D850. Remember, if you like my video, give it a thumbs up. If you are subscribed, make sure you ring that bell. And we'll see you in the next video.